Ciao. So this is going to be a quick fire what I read in the month of August video because I have fallen out of the reading, monthly reading wrap ups, I think since April or something. So obviously I have a lot to catch up on, but I'm not going to do all of that now. We're obviously approaching um, kind of the last bit of September. So um, I do want to get back on doing these. So I'm going to look at my phone for a second, see what I read, and then let's do it. I'm not even sitting in a chair because this needs to happen like that. The first two books I'm gonna talk about, I read while I was in Greece on vacation. I have a vlog about that, so I'll put it here. Um, and the first book that I read on that trip was Transit by Rachel Cusk. Um, I read it on my Kindle. Kindle. Kindle, so I'll put the cover here. Um, in short, if you're not familiar with the Outline Trilogy of Rachel Cusk, it's the trilogy that she's kind of known for, uh, this series of autofiction books, um, Outline I read last year and just absolutely, it just blew me away, really, or was it even two years ago now? But anyway, I love Rachel Cusk um, and I loved Outline so much, so I picked up Transit and enjoyed it just as much. I ate that book in five seconds. Like I read it so fast. We're following our main character. Her name is Faye. And similarly to Outline, it's kind of structured by different conversations or different interactions she has with different people. The disintegration of her marriage or her relationship, like very, smart, sharp. It really has the pace of real life while being very, very intelligent and she could just write anything and I would love it. You learn a little bit more about Faye. If you've only read Outline, you know that, that kind of the point of that book is you don't really know anything about our main character. Um, and so we get a little bit more of her in this. So if I talk about it more with my partner actually in that vlog that I mentioned, so you can go watch it. Then, um, the other book that I read, so I'm sweating, was this one. Um, the Summer Without Men by Siri Hustvet. This is my first Siri Hustvet novel and it was so wonderful. I just really nailed it with the vacation reads. I would fully recommend to you uh, without a doubt. So this follows, um, what is her main character? Mia. And the book opens with her husband saying that he wants to go on a pause, um, a pause in the marriage. And it sends her into a minor psychotic breakdown. She's admitted to the hospital. That's not really, we don't, we're not there. Um, so if you're not interested in that, don't worry because we're, it's not like she's, this takes place in a, a mental facility or anything. She leaves, she goes to her childhood town in like the prairies and she's basically falling into the community and the lives of a town with almost no men. I think there's like two men that are referenced in this book but everything is about women and she's with her aging mother and her aging mother is also meeting or is living kind of in this home for elderly women. And there's a group of them which are called the Swans and they're just the most wonderful, eclectic, hilarious, crazy ass old women in their nineties. Um, and it was just, it was just great. So she's dealing with questions like what to do about her marriage why did he go on a, why did he ask for a pause? Now, if he wants to get back together, does she want it? It was so good, so well written. She's hilarious. I really laughed out loud multiple times. So much underlined in here. Like a book with wisdom in it, like little bits of wisdom and humor. And it was really touching and I just wanted to hold it at my heart. And um, it made me think about aging and my my own parents aging if you like books um, that deal with other books then you'll love this also she references a lot of other authors other books i think she's a poetry teacher this main character um and she describes like this poetry class she teaches to a group of young um women like 
teenage girls. Um, and so that in contrast with this group of women in their 90s, so like womanhood and at different stages of life um, and the such poetry is like included in here, which some of it's really hilarious. So anyway, I really recommend this. I haven't heard anyone talk about this book on booktube so please read this and tell me what you think then we have um another book i don't have with me which is the mayor of leipzig by rachel kushner i talked about this a lot in length um with sophie from biblio sophie we made a video together so i'll link it up here upstairs um and we talk about a lot of things in that video but we do really talk about Rachel Kushner a lot and about this book. It's a really, really small, tiny novella. It has like big font. It just feels kind of reading like a, like a children's book or something. It follows um, an American, I think she's American, um, artist who is on a trip, a work trip to Cologne in Germany and also in Leipzig. And she's meeting with her gallerists there and maybe some different like shows that she's um, participating in. And it's a really strange, weird little novella, but I absolutely recommend it. I think if you can get your hands on it, like a library copy or a used copy or a borrow from someone that you know that has it, um, it'll really take you one afternoon to read it. And I think it's very small, but causes a lot of conversation um, about, yeah, male, privilege also, like some toxic stuff in art, in life. Um, it's just interesting. So I recommend you read it and we can chat about it. Then I read a poetry collection um, called When the Night Agrees to Speak to Me by Ananda Devi, I think. I'll put it here. This was translated from French. Um, Sophie and I also read this and I really enjoyed it. Um, to be completely honest, I don't remember now so much from it other than it's quite vivid in its um, exploration of the body. This poet is a Mauritian poet, so I, that's the first Mauritian um, author that I've read. Um, so that was exciting and yeah, she deals with memory oh aging a lot about aging aging body um violence colonialism was really like some of the poetry i liked more than others like, there are some really standouts there i wish i had it in front of me but um i left it with rebecca um rebecca eats books um, and yeah, now I can't pull it back into my memory, but I, I enjoyed my reading experience of it. And I enjoyed the lyrical flow, very strong imagery. And then in the end, there's some like short prose, um, about writing, about the body, about aging on all those themes, but just kind of longer, uh, prose style poetry and those were really interesting and beautiful. The translator's note also I think that's quite fascinating so if you like poetry I think that this um, is a good one. So Sophie read the French, there's French on one side and English on the other at least in the edition that I got um, and she read the only the French and she also enjoyed it. I think she talked about it in a wrap-up video. Come down here. Um, the last one is another poetry collection called Averno by Louise Gluck. I think Gluck is how you say it, Gluck. I know about this book through Katie James because she spoke about it in a wrap up. Um, I will put all the videos that I mentioned downstairs. And just from her description of this, I thought, oh, I have to read that. And she told me it's definitely in my vein. Um, so I sh should pick it up. In southern Italy, there's a small crater lake called Averno, and the ancient Romans believed that Averno was the kind of entry door to the underworld, which I just love that in general. Like, that by itself is great. There is a lot of nature imagery, nature uh, nature poetry. So if you like that kind of thing, um, then I would definitely give this 
your attention. I think it's dealing with questions of the world, the earth. Um, like here, there's one line at the beginning of a poem called who can say what the world is. And I marked that as like an overall question or theme that these poems pose. Like, what is the world? How do we define that? How do we define being in that? We relate to the earth um, and also looking at the damage that the earth has um, received from humankind. Mortality and death, there's a lot of, of death here. Um, <laughs> human life versus the earth um, that we will pass, but you know, the earth continues on without us, but also hasn't been unscathed by our species. Emphasis on winter, um, snow. Talks about Persephone um, in this, and she kind of retells, kind of has like a Persephone retelling. Um, similar, I would say, I think I said this in a video before. In this vein of like Anne Carson, when she kind of retells in her own ways Greek myth, or she takes specific characters from Greek mythology or like really, really old Greek poets, and she like drops them into modern life. Um, and so this feels similar, referencing Persephone. Death, killing, um, yeah, birth. There, I marked some like poems that I thought were good, like the first one, The Night Migrations, Persephone the Wanderer, and then a few at the end, like Averno, Omens, Thrush. I just love the word thrush. That word gives me like the tingles. There were a lot in the middle chunk that I kind of felt very dry over. I had a conversation with Eleanor, who if you don't follow Eleanor on YouTube, her um, name is The Only Real Property. I will link it below. She's big on poetry. It's mostly what she speaks about on her channel. And I think uh, she makes it really accessible, but also she wants just to talk about poetry more. I think it's a really daunting area um, that many people are intimidated by. And, you know, um, but she talks about poetry a lot and I just love Eleanor and I love her videos and I feel like I it's a masterclass um, and very thought provoking. Every video she posts about the poetry that she reads and about language and symbolism and just, so many devices that are used in poetry that I think are really interesting. So um, I was speaking to her that sometimes poetry written in first person can feel to me over overtly earnest in a way that puts me off, cringy sometimes. Um, and I, uh, when I talked to her about that, this was what I was reading that kind of prompted that remark. So. Um, not everything, the sun's going down and the video is getting blurry and grainy, I apologize. I wouldn't say this was wholly successful. However, it's very difficult in essay collections and in poetry collections to feel like every, every single poem speaks to you. Didn't Frank just slip on the ice? Didn't he heal? Weren't the spring seeds planted? Didn't the night end? Didn't the melting ice flood the narrow gutters? Wasn't my body rescued? Wasn't it safe? Um, so there are some beautiful lines. And um, I would say going into the fall, winter months, um, this would be an atmospheric pair, pairing to the weather. I think I just wanted to love it, love more of it more. Okay, um, the sun is out. <laughs> And so am I. So thank you for watching and let me know what you read in August. I'm so sorry that this was so late, um, but I felt like some of those books were really great ones and I didn't want to miss out on sharing them with you. So um, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.